Hello everyone, welcome to Flutter Junction and today we are going to integrate the chat GPT's OpenAI endpoint API into our application in our Flutter application and this is our final application shall be looking we are going to ask some questions let's say what is Flutter and then we are getting response from the OpenAI and you can see here we have the response and uh, obviously we can share and we can also copy from here so this is our final application uh, shall be looking and also we, we are going to have the splash screen so, uh, now let's uh, get back to our uh, topic what is chat gpt and chat gpt is a bot chatting bot you can see here and you can ask any type of questions from here okay let's say um, code for login in flutter and you can use this chat gpt uh, for your own terms and your for on beneficial and you can use the power of chat gpt not only for coding not only for uh, writing but also you can use it in your daily life to solve some things and you can also uh, write the blog from here you can uh, create the blog and then you can also uh, modify it and then you can use it for your need so you can see here we have the login form generated by chat gpt it is generating okay you can see a raise button it should be elevated button uh, raise button is now deprecated so it has given the code for us not only that you can also uh, use it to write blocks let's say uh, write a block for flutter and you can see here it starts to write and you can modify these uh, contents and you can use as per your need so that you can uh, remove the uh, redundancy into your uh, content and it is still writing so you you need to uh, check the power of uh, OpenAI and it is very interesting to use and also you can make it your friend and uh, you, you can use it as per your need right and it is still writing okay it is coming in the conclusion now you can see here it has given the long block for us you can modify it and use it as per your need okay and to integrate this chat gpt into our application you need to go to openai.com because we are going to need the API key and on openai.com go to API and then you need to log in and if you haven't logged in sign up please sign up and then log in to openai you can see here we have different uh, options here and we can use uh, this openai for text completion also code completion, image generation, fine tuning and uh, not only also in embeddings also and we are going to uh, build an application using this text, uh, text completion today you can see here this is there is a lot of documentation here and also you can open it in the, into the playground also and let's say when i give the sentiment ratings one and it is going to give the negative or negative and you can see here the model and this model we are going to we need to have this model we are going to use this model into our application also and we have the lots of uh, present here you can use it and test it not only that we have the lots of options here you can uh, test as per a need also you can change it the maximum length also okay after playing let's uh, get back here and then 
we need to have that in point and so for making the request we need to have the in point and this is going to be our in point and this is the base url this up to b1 https api.openai.com and this is the base url and completions this is the end point and we are going to need you can see here we need to pass the content content type application slash json into our application and then the authorization and the br token you can see here we need to have uh, api key and for that we need to go to our this uh, personal and then to our view api keys and then you can create your api key from here and then copy it and now let's get back to our postman and see how our response is going to loop and for that okay and this is our endpoint openai.com b1 slash uh, completions and this is going to be the post request and on our headers we need to pass content type and the authorization and then on authorization this is uh, br we are going to pass the br token and this is going to be our the api key we have just generated and on body we are going to yeah, on default it is going to be the form data and you need to go to raw and then here you need to select the application slash json and you can see here we are going to use this model and you can see this model takes da vinci 003 and then the prompt this means this is our query what is flutter and when you send the request We are getting this response. You can see here we have ID, object, and model also choices, and this is our response. And it is a free and open source mobile UI framework created by. And it doesn't have length. Okay, so this is how our JSON is going to look. Now let's get back to our application and then build the Chat GPT in our Flutter application. Okay, right now let's do some cleaning first. Let's delete this home page and then let's return container from here for now. Sorry, okay, and for that, and we are going to use the block library for our state management and then we are going to follow the clean architecture so uh, first now let's uh, create some folders here our packages into our application and before creating the folders or uh, before making our architecture let's get to the popset.yml file and then add the dependency that we are going to use in this project and here we are going to use these packages uh, flutter block for our reset management equitable it uh, makes sure that our values are not uh, same and http to make http request and get it and share plus and then it's similar okay after uh, adding the dependencies uh, we, we will have the pop get running so after adding these dependencies uh, let's get back to our lib folder and then first create our architecture clean architecture and first we are going to create the features folder here we are going to implement our text completion our features that is our text completion page and so inside features let's create other folder and name it text completion And inside features, uh, we create the other folder that's an app. And here we are going to uh, add our splash screen and other uh, constants into this app folder. So here we are going to use the clean architecture. You can see here we have widgets, presentation, domain layer, data layer, repositories, and we have uh, API or database. So now let's get back and create the other folder text completion and first we create the new folder named data you can see here 
we have data and then we have domain and then the presentation we are going to follow this architecture then and text completion domain and the other folder repositories okay and after that we are going to create the new folder uh, presentation okay and then after inside the data we create the new folder first we have model and on data remote data source and then the repositories okay and inside this model we are going to create the models from this response you can see here we are going to create the uh, model from this response and then i am going to copy this repositories and then paste it inside the domain uh, domain is also going to have this repository and here we are going to sign the contract so here in this uh, uh, figure you can see there is a gradient in between between domain and data and then here we are going to sign the contract in our application and the contract is coming to this uh, domain repository and then we are going to inject uh, this uh, contract to this repository and inside this presentation we create in a folder pages and then in this application we are going to use the block uh, library for our issue management and we are going to use the qubit so inside the presentation we have the other folder qubit so you can see we have the folder structure let's uh, look to our folder structure and first we have the lib folder here we are we have added the features and inside the features we have two folders app and text completion this is our uh, feature and then inside the text completion you can see we have data domain and presentation and inside data we have model the remote data source and then the repositories and then the inside the domain we are not we have the repositories and then inside the presentation we have qubit and the pages and this is our architecture so again inside the features we create the new folder name global and all the global uh, uh, things into this application are going to be placed here and here we are going to uh, use the uh, use the uh, logics and functions or uh, any other things that are, are common in these features the text completion and other can be other also and we can use this uh, global uh, items from this global and inside again in the lib folder i am going to create a new folder uh, let's say name core and here we are going to create all the ex exceptions apis or endpoints here and again inside the here global need to have the new folder common all the common items from the features are going to be stored here and then the provider okay and after that we all have the folder uh, structure created here now let's get back to our project now, now inside the core folder we create the new file and name it constants dot dot and here we, we are going to have the endpoint and our key and here we have the string uh, our key and then the base url you can see here and this key is the key that was generated before and i have this on my post uh, postman and you can go to your open ai and then use that key i will copy this and then paste it here this is my api key and we are going to attach the endpoint into this base url and then we are going to make the request 
now let's add some assets uh, into our project and here on the root folder i create a new folder named assets and here i add my assets into the application you can see here i have two assets uh, one is loading gif and the other is yeah, the logo of open ai okay uh, coming back to our uh, popsec.yml file we need to provide the path of image you can see here after uh, uses message left design you can see here assets and then uncomment it and our path would be assets slash you can see here this is the folder name assets and then slash and after getting the slash you can get all these uh, assets from your ui okay after this now let's get back to our project Okay, we don't need this now coming back to main dart file and inside in the build i'm going to delete the material app and then have my own material app and then we have the title chat gpt and debug so check uh, mode banner false and we have the generate route you can see the either we have created this pilot and we have the initial route slash and then we can see the route here slash and we are redirect to the splash screen now coming back to our folder okay. inside the features app here we are going to create some any folders one is going to be going to be app const and other is going to be splash Plus and other is going to be routes. Next plus here we are we are going to design our plus screen. Now first we are going to have our uh, constants and then in the routes we are going to have our routes on the red route. And inside the route I create a new file. Let's say on on generate route dot star. And inside here you can see we have the class on generate route we have we take the route dynamic and the route settings here uh, our arguments and then when our argument our settings is slash we are redirecting uh, re redirecting into the and when the uh, our routes is question answer we are going to redirect it to the test completion page and when we, whenever we have the error and we are going to redirect to the error page and you can see the error page here and let's import some okay you can see we have one error here because we haven't created this test completion page in the app routes yet and we have the material builder it, uh, it does nothing but it takes the widget here we are passing the widget from here this is our widget and it, re it re redirects to our page this is a uh, metal builder is doing here okay now let's uh, create the uh, app routes and for that uh, i create the new, new file named routes const dot dot and inside here i create the new class named app routes and then the string question air question answer and then the other uh, our value will be question answer and we are going to import it to our ungenerate route and the error should be gone now and then this text completion page let's uh, get back to our presentation and the inside the page let's create the new file text completion page completion is dot dot and here i am going to create the stateless widget and name it text completion page okay and i will remove this and then import the material right 
and we import this text completion page to our in ungenerated route and then in the main dot dot we import ungenerated route okay so for now inside the text completion page I would return scaffold and that I have body of center and child text and let's give a text completion page and it should be const okay scaffold should be the const and we have okay when you can see here we have the error on our main dot dot now let's create this splash screen and we have the splash folder here and inside we create the new file name is splash screen dot dot and it is going to be a stateful widget splash screen okay and now let's import this splash screen to our main dot dot file and the error should be gone now now let's get back to our splash and then design it and i would remove these two packages and then import the material from flutter and the error should be gone now okay here on a splash screen state i'm going to add the init state so let's import app routes and then on the build remove this and then we are going to have this scaffold here we are having okay it should be closed right and here we have this scaffold and then the stack we have this image open ai avatar from our assets you can see here this png we are going to use and it is it, it has the fit box with dot content and inside any state we can see here we are uh, delaying uh, up four seconds and after four seconds we are we are redirect it to our uh, question and answer page this page and on generate route you can see on this question and answer we are redirecting redirecting it to our text completion page so let's get back to our splash screen okay and whenever the splash screen loads and it uh, get stuck or it get paused for 4 seconds you can see here 4 seconds and then uh, we are being redirected to our question answer page and this push replacement name this means it uh, clears all the stacks of uh, routes back coming to this and then it redirects to the question answer that means and our splash screen is only showing only one time so the this push replacement name does that thing and on main the dot file we have the routes here we have already defined our routes and on slash, uh, slash we are going to redirect it to our splash screen okay now let's run this application and we have our application running you can see we are being redirected to hide here text completion page and when we restart it again I think the splash screen was not found right now we have the splash screen and then we are being redirected to the text completion page you can see here hey text completion page is displayed in this page right our app is working now now let's design this text completion page and let's close all this okay now in the 
domain layer and inside repositories uh, i will create a new file text completion repository dot dot okay here we are going to create an abstract class with the text completion model and that uh, takes the query uh, our text that uh, we are going to search and it is the method text uh, get text completion and this text completion model we haven't created our model yet and we are going to create the model based on this response you can see here this is our response from our endpoint and uh, using this we are going to uh, design our model okay let's get back to our project and then so to create this text completion model we go inside the data in the model we create the new file create a new file name text completion model the dot and here we are going to design our model and this is going to be our text completion model we have the num created you can see in the api it is created and it is the number you can see and this should be same here and it shouldn't be different uh, otherwise we are going to get the error and then we have the text completion data you can see our choices and in the text completion data we have text index and the finished prison you can see here text index and the finished prison so this is our model you can see we have taken only some parameters from this uh, json only created and then the list of choices you can see and then our text index and the finish region right now let's get back to our repository and then import this completion model okay so we have the constructor here and this from json and it is our uh, app is going to get data in the form of json and after that it is we, we are returning the model uh, object from here so that we can get our these objects from the dot operator into our ui similarly in the text completion data it is same okay so for this repository we are going to create the use case so for this method let's create the use case so inside domain create the new uh, folder name use case cases and the new file text completion use case dot tar this use case we are going to use the core logic so here we are having the a class named text completion use case and then the text completion user repository the repository we have just created this repository and here we have injected okay let's see, let me import it first okay we have the constructor and then in the constructor we have passed this repository here and then i have created a new method named call and then it takes the parameter query and it is the async because it returns the future future and from here it is calling the this method from the repository so now we have completed uh, created this text completion repository and this contract we, we need to sign on this repository so to create the new file and named text completion repository implementation 
I am here dot it should be tab okay right now inside here we are going to sign this contract in this file so how we are going to do that so here let's import it first and then the model right this we haven't created and what is here happening is we have implemented this text completion repository we have just created this uh, text completion repository and then we are overriding this text completion this method we are overriding this uh, method here we text the query and uh, which is asynchronous and then uh, we are calling this uh, method to uh, the remote data source and we haven't all created this uh, file now let's create it and so for that in the remote data source create the new file first would be text completion remote data source Post dot and let's copy this and the other file will be data source implementation impl dot dot inside here it is going to have the extract uh, abstract class and it is same as this uh, text completion repository and the use of uh, and the uh, uh, use of this uh, abstract class is that we can use uh, we can run the test unit test on this class so we are creating this uh, data source implementation the dot so this remote data source and this uh, repository are same you can see and it is done so that we can run unit test on it right now let's go to our source implementation so in this data source impl implementation we are going to run this request so inside here we create the new class text completion remote data source implementation that implements text completion remote data source remote data source this file which we have just created and then it needs to override the method this method it need to override this method because we have implemented it so now let's create our http http dot client we need name it HTTP client and for that need to import the HTTP package and we have the reference okay, let's name it HTTP client okay and then we create the constructor for final fields and then make it named and then required right now inside here we are going to perform our query and the http request perform http request we need to have the endpoint and then the params we need what need to be passed the parameters you can see here these parameters not this this model and prompt we need to uh, pass these parameters and for that we need to map them and we have row params it is map string and string and we have the model text that which is 0 0 and the prompt that our question will be query and then we encode our params
equals json dot code the params and we need to import the json dot convert right Then the user should be gone now, and then we create the response. Wait, HTTP operations, HTTP client dot post, and we need to have the URL URI dot parse our endpoint. It should be the method should be async and the endpoint it should be endpoint okay and then we need to pass our parameters on the body this encoded parameters and then need to pass the header that we are option and we need to pass the chat api key and we can import this chat api key Put it first. Right. right, and we haven't created this method yet. Now let's create this methods, and then we need to join our endpoints so that it it would be the full URL. First, now let's do that. And for that, we go to the Features and global, and then in the provider, we create the new file and provider dot dot. And inside here, we are going to create our method and the endpoint. And let's import the base, uh, base URL right here. We are taking the endpoint from here and we are connecting with the base URL and then returning the endpoint. And in the header, we are options. You can see in this here you need to pass content type and the authorization so from here i'm passing these uh, parameters into this impl and i'm calling this header here option uh, okay let's copy this and then paste it so that it, it may not be wrong and then import it and in this in point we have only this endpoint so for that let's call this endpoint let's call the endpoint and then sorry let's call this endpoint and then pass this endpoint here and then it returns the string you can see it returns the string by connecting with the base url and we have our url completed okay and now after that after that we check if the response is okay or not let's uh, remove that and then here when the response that status code is 200 that means our uh, server api call is okay and then we are returning the data in the form of uh, object that means from json takes the json data and then it returns the object you can see here takes the json data you can see and then it returns the object okay let's get back to it so and whenever our response is not okay that means whenever our 
response don't get the data or response gets the error we are throwing the server exception with the message text completion server exception so we haven't created this server exception now let's get back and create this class and before that we can see this showing the error let's import right now let's get back and this create this server exception and then we come back to the core and then create the new file exceptions start and we create the new file and the class named server exception that implements the exception and it takes the string matches we have the constructor here you can see here this server exception is taking the message string and it is required so let's import this into our I am I, I implementation file okay now we have completed the data layer and the domain layer tags now getting back to the presentation on the qubit create the new file right and then you should come now right and then we have here the abstract class that extends the equitable that means we don't want to uh, to we want our variables to be unique so and then we have the initial state that means uh, whenever our uh, file is created our class is uh, run the, we are going to call this state and then we have the initial state the loading state when when the when the state is loading uh, then we need to show the circular progress indicator and then the, we have the other state after loading the data loaded state and it takes the data our transaction sorry text completion model let's say it text completion model data and then the, we create the constructor we need to create the constructor and then make it named and then required right and then we have the error state whenever uh, we get the error when getting the data then we are going to emit this this state and it doesn't take the model it only takes the string and that can be null message and copy this paste it here and then change its name to this error message and then error should be gone now okay we have our state created now let's get back to our qubit so here we have created the class um, text completion qubit and that extends the qubit of the type um, text completion state and this uh, uh, parameter we have text completion use and then in the constructor it is required that means we have passed this parameter and then we have this method text completion and that returns void that means it doesn't return anything and it returns the future void and because it is async so it is future okay and when we first our this method is called we emit the text completion loading and when this state is loading we are going to show the uh, circular progress indicator and when it is when the state is loading and then we perform some task here yeah? task here yeah? and then first we call this method from text completion use case we call this method and pass this query 
this parameter it takes the parameter query string parameter and then we pass this parameter to the call method from the text completion use case you can see here we have this case it's back to the qubit right and from the text uh, we call the use call, this call method and whatever the response is uh, here we assign to the text completion model data and when our data is okay or we, we got the data from the server we emit the text completion loaded with the data the response coming from this method and when we get the socket exception or the uh, socket exception we are emitting the error message text completion error message and then whenever we get the server exception also we are emitting the text completion error and now we have implemented the logic on the data domain and the presentation now we need to uh, create some logic on injection so inside the text completion create the new file text completion injection container so here we have future void in the method text completion injection container and it is going to be okay it should be async okay, it should be method okay and before adding some logic here let's create the new file inside the lib folder for our injection and name it injection container dot tar so here we have to get instance and we need to uh, and we have the init method and first let's initialize the http here we are going to initialize the http and then inside the init we are referencing to our http right let's import it okay so here we have initialized our http that client and then emit http client and we have this call get it and then register legacy singleton and then we have passed this http client and then reference this object so the beauty of this injection is that we only create the instance of this http only once throughout the application and whenever we need this uh, http client we just uh, call it but we are not uh, going to make the new instance only the http client instance is made only once and then from here we are injecting this text completion in, uh, injection container here it is calling this text uh, completion inject injection container so now let's add some logic here and here first we initialize the remote data uh, let's improve import and then this also and then this method also right and the error should be gone now and after that we initialize the next repository put it and also import and then the use case right and then the block and the header should be gone now let's 
refactor it. So in the register lazy singleton, we have uh, registered the uh, is type uh, text completion remote data source, and then we have extended the method. We have calling the method, and then we have uh, given this text completion re, uh, remote data source implementation, and we are calling the implementation, and then creating the instance of HTTP client, and then calling this call method from get it. Now almost all uh, our features is uh, completed. Now let's uh, create the our UI of text completion. And before that, uh, go to our uh, main dot file. Okay. And here we ensure in initialize our uh, parameters and injections. So for that, I create a new file uh, for. HTTP certificate and let's name it certificate manager underscore HTTP dot start and here I create the certificate and it should be import okay so here uh, I have created a class name as my HTTP overrides that extends the HTTP overrides and it overrides the method create HTTP client and that takes the security context and then return the super create HTTP client it creates the HTTP client and then it returns whenever we have the bad certificate callback it checks here with our certificate that means our host port or certificate so now coming back to the main dot file and inject our dependencies here Initialize our dependencies here. So first I import the injection container and then inside the main method and import the certificates. Right, and it should be sync. Import the HTTP overrides also. Right, and the error should be gone now. And first, we have ensured everything is uh, initialized, and then we override the global my this certificate. This certificate we have just created, and then we are in initiating our this injection container. You can see here this is our injection container from the main dot dart file so now let's get back to our text completion page and design our page and inside text completion presentation pages and text completion page okay now here we are going to design our text completion page First, we make this class stateful and then add the app bar. Shouldn't be const. Okay, and then inside the body, we have center. Child of children, uh, child of column. And the children, and then inside the column. So inside column, we have the expanded, and we have the block builder. Okay, let's import it first. We have the block builder, and we are checking if our state is text completion loading then we are showing this loading indicator assets loading gif uh, which have width and height of 300 and 300 and then when our state text completion state is text completion loaded that means our data is loaded then here we are taking the state data uh, we are taking the data text completion model data from the state and the list of choices that means our answers and then returning the choices in the list view 
in the each list we have card and here you can see text data where uh, from this choices data this choices data we are taking the each item of the index and then on the card we have padding and the showing the data text our answer and then we have the share button let's import this here and the copy button okay now we have our uh, uh, layout designed now we need to have this sorts bar here sorts text field so let's create that first inside global create new folder sorts text field dot dot okay it is the folder sorry copy this rename it and then create the new file right now inside here we are going to design this sorts text field and then with the send button and this is going to be our sorts text field that takes uh, two parameters one is the editing text editing controller and other is the on tap function and it has the text field you can see the text field and then the send button so let's go to our text completion page and then call this sorts text field here text completion page after expanded we are going to call this sorts text field let's import it and we need to have the sorts text controller let's create the text editing controller text editing controller and then create this method and outside the field and we have our error gone and let's go to the main data file okay we haven't a provider we haven't created the provider here wrap with our material app with our a provider and so for that let's wrap it with a widget multi provider provider multi block provider and it takes the providers parameters and here we are going to call our uh, text completion qubit and let's import right now we are ready to run our application let's run it restart it again and we have this splash screen and then our text completion page with our uh, search button and the send uh, button okay now let's place some query here and let's ask what is the capital capital of usa you can see here the tap button is not working let's get back to the text completion page so it's not working here all right we have not initialize our Sort text uh, controller. We haven't added the listener into the init state. Okay, now let's restart it again. After adding the init state, and uh, we are listening to the sort text controller. It should work now. Uh, okay, let's. What is the capital of USA? and it is working and we are getting the response washington dc you can copy and also you can share it with your uh, to your uh, 
social links you can see here right so in this tutorial we learned how to integrate the open ai's uh, api into our flutter application and if you have any queries regarding this video please ping me and comment or also you can follow our newsletter on flutterjunction.com and you can follow us on flutter junction also and uh, you can contact us from this contact section you can place your name email or message and you can submit to flutter junction okay so if you like this video don't forget to like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel and follow flutter junction thank you happy coding